Greetings and welcome to a new video about an electric circuits problem. We continue with the superposition principle and in this example number three we will look at a more challenging circuit. As we did in the previous videos we'll look at the calculations and simulations for this circuit so we will work out the calculations step by step and then verify this, uh, these calculations in SPI simulations. So let's look at our problem we have the circuit given which you can see is we have three resistors and also three independent sources we have two dc voltage sources and one current source so it is a little bit complicated than the previous two examples for the discussion of the superposition principle of course the complete list of these discussions and on the electric circuits in dc domain are shown in the video description as a playlist so you can go to that list and continue with more simple examples first and then come back to this more complex analysis what we have we have the va it's 10 volts and vb is 20 volts and we have also current source is 2 amps r1 and r2 and r3 are also given 10 ohms 20 ohms and 60 ohms each given now we want to calculate using the superposition principle the voltage in this case across r3 in this case uh, r3 voltage is shown as here so we have the plus left and a minus right and this is the v3 we would like to calculate so how do we do this what are the steps so let's look at our solutions the step one is always keep one independent source at a time active that means we have three resist uh, three sources and we need to only activate one sort at a time and that means disable the rest so if i start with va it doesn't matter actually where you start but if i say only va active that means all dc current sources must be an open so this is open and all dc voltage sources must be a short and this will be a short so that's actually also shown here so vb is shorted and is is an open so the circuit becomes actually like this so we open the DC current source and we open the uh, short the DC voltage source. Now what you have is now the following. You have VA still in place because that's the only active source and R1. And now we have the R2 and R3 in this format. Now in order to calculate this voltage specifically due to VA, we need to do a little bit more. So we can say, okay, if I look at R3, it is in effect parallel with R2. So I need to first combine them and then move on. I cannot ignore that because there will be some current flow also here. And I cannot just use the, let's say, the voltage divide rule for the R1, R3 only. So we need to combine the two resistors R2 and R3. Let's denote this note as X will be helpful. And then make this box, the pink box here. And I call these two resistors R2 and R3 combined Rx. That means this is the combination and we can work out the two resistors in parallel using this formula. I have the these values 20 ohms and 60 ohms for my R2 and R3 and I will get 15 ohms effectively for this part of the circuit. Now then the circuit becomes actually effectively this. So R1 in series with Rx which is connected to the VA. We want of course the voltage across R3 only. But we know that if I know the voltage at node X, that means node X is this point with respect to ground, I also know the voltage across the threes due to that VA. Why? Because it's also parallel actually to this uh, element. So if I now use voltage divider rule here, now I can use it because this is the part where you can use this voltage divider rule you can say vx is equal to rx over the total r1 plus rx times va and you can now substitute the values you will get 6 volts as said this is a parallel circuit so r2 and r3 are parallel and if i know this node voltage then i also know the voltage across r2 but also know the voltage across r3 and that is then the following conclusion, the V3 VA, due to that VA, is also Vx, and that's also 6 volts. So we have now the first effect for this circuit 
only considering the VA. Now, let's move on and then activate VB only. That is the second step. So VA, VB only active, that means VA is now short and this is now I as the current source will be an open. Now the circuit becomes like this. So we, we have still that open DC and this will be a short for VA. What you see again, you see an R3 in series with the VB, but now you have the R1 and R2 parallel. So again, this is the voltage we need to calculate. That is only the partial effect. So let's do that VB. And I need to now again combine these two to again use the voltage divider rule. There are of course many other methods to work this out. You can also use, let's say, the current divider rule by converting this part to the Norton, Norton equivalent circuit. That is all possible, but this is, I think, the, let's say, more simple way to work it out. So combine R1 and R2, and I call that node Y, and then make a red box around it or a pink box, and that Ry is then a parallel combination of R1 and R2. And if I now work it out, I know what the R1 is and also R2, so 10 ohms and 20 ohms, so that will give me 20 over 3 ohms. So I keep it as an exact value because that will give me nice results at the end. So this is now the resistor. These two resistors will be then merged together to get 20 over 3 ohms. So then the circuit becomes like that. So we have R3 in series with the Ry, but we are interested in this voltage. So in this polarity, so from plus to minus, from left to right. Now we need to see this a little bit carefully because VB here is pushing actually the plus on top, but I see a minus sign here and then the plus. So actually my measurement of the voltage across R3 is in the opposite direction of the current flow of that VB. So I need to consider a minus sign in my equation. So be careful with that. So if I, for example, want the voltage across Ry, then that voltage is in the same orientation as the current flow for Vb. So using now the voltage divider rule, I must say R3 over R3 plus Ry times not Vb, but times minus Vb, because the plus here will result in a current flow like that but the current in our case will flow from left to right remember that now we have everything substituted and again as said before if i use exact value 20 over 3 here in the equation and r3 was 60 and vb was 20 with a minus sign of course minus 20 you will get exact the minus 18 so don't round this off do that at the end. So we will have the minus 18 volts. So now we have the second part of our calculations. Now the final part is actually, or the final uh, source we need to consider was is the IS, which is the DC current source. So if I only activate this, then the two voltage sources will be then shorted. So that will be then the following circuit will be then produced. So shorted VA and shorted VB. So IS is still in place and we have the three resistors. Now what I want to use here is I see a current source and also three resistors actually effectively in parallel. In order to use the current divider rule, because that is I think the easiest way to work this voltage, I need to reduce this circuit to a current source with two resistors. Then I can use the current divider rule directly. I want to keep that R3, so this is the resistor. I don't want to change or merge with another resistor. I can change or merge the R1 and R2 together. So that's again what I want to do. So combine R1 and R2. We know that was that point. I call now that the different point, point P, and then combine them. That is again the parallel combination of R1 and R2. And we already did that, so I go a little bit faster. It was now 20 over 3 ohms. This part is now again merge. The circuit then becomes like that. So we have IS and then we have this RP here. Actually, you do that due to these two resistors. And this is the voltage I actually need. Now we have now a current source which is going from point P to ground. And I know this current source in this opposite, let's say, direction and going into ground will then push the current in that format. But my current here in the circuit is going 
from left to right and the IS is pushing actually the current from right to left. Again, we need to consider the minus sign here, really be careful. So we need to say, if I want to use the current divider rule here, I say the I3 due to the IS is the other resistor RP over R3 plus RP times minus IS. That is very important. That is because the orientation of the current, why I'm looking at is opposite of the current of IS, which is pushing here in the branch. So when I get now exactly 20 over 3 over 60 plus 20 over 3 times, because it was 2 amps, so you get minus 2 amps and you will get exactly minus 0 0.2 amps for your current here. It will of course flow from the right to left plus 0 0.2 amps. Now we of course need the correct polarity, so this is the value we need to use. Then we can say we know the current now of this resistor and also its value. So we can use the Ohm's law. So we can say, okay, V3 due to that IS is then the current we just have calculated times resistor minus 0 0.2 times 60. That was the result, that was the value of the resistor. And you got minus 12 volts. Okay, fine. Now we have also the third effect. So we can say step two is combine the results to get the total solution. So we have now partial results. We will combine them. And since this is a linear circuit, we can add them together and that's just a simple summation. So V3 due to VA plus the V3 due to VB and then V3 due to IS. All of them together. Now we know it was 6 volts for the first case. Second case was minus 18 and we have this also for the third case. Now combine them together you will get minus 24 volts. That's the total the source uh, the actual solution for this uh, exercise now let's also look at the summary so we begun actually with this circuit and actually then converted that using only activation of the va to this circuit now by activating only vb we made this circuit and by activating only is and we made this circuit so this is a nice representation i think a nice summary and this circuit produces six volts this one gave us minus 12 volts for this and this was minus 18 and in total we got minus 24 and this is actually our end result for this problem now we will also look at the uh, simulation we already said so let's also look at the simulation results this is the circuit i have uh, drawing in the simulator you can see r1 r2 r3 and the VA and VB and also IS. So we have 2 amps, 20 uh, volts, 10 volts, etc. for the resistors values. Now, if I now run the DC analysis in the simulator, I get this table. You get more information than required, but it's nice to see what's, uh, what's going on here. This voltage is actually between node 2 and node 3. So this node and that node, that's actually shown here. So let me label that in red. This V underscore R3 is actually going from node 2 to node 3. And you can see it is minus 24 volts. So that's exactly what we have calculated. So this solution was already in the calculations. And now the simulations, ver the simulation result verify these calculations. So that's nice to see. Let's also do that in the simulate itself and then uh, see more and then also discuss a little bit more about the circuit there. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator and also generate this table using this circuit. So let's move on. Now here we are at the simulator. This is the circuit I already have prepared for you. You can see the VA 10 volts, VB 20 volts, and we have the 60 ohm for R3 where we want to measure the voltage. And we have the two amps going from top to ground and we have the r1 and r2 also so we would like to know the voltage here so we can say let's again make from analysis dc analysis and then make table results and you can see that the table is generated now i can click with my pen here and you can see it is highlighted as a vr3 is minus 24 volts what you also can do is the following. You can also check the other voltages. 
which are of course not the question in place here but you can also check what they are so if you click on the component you get the current and also the associated voltage what you also can do is you can also say i want to measure the uh, let's say the voltage across this resistor directly so you can use the voltmeter click on it now let's call this v3 and also we'll rotate this so control r in uh, if you use uh, windows and if i now also rotate this like that so to see it nicely now if i now connect this because voltage meter must be connected in parallel if i now again run this but then in this form dc analysis and calculate this you get directly actually the value of the solution for this voltage remember it must be of course from plus to minus if i do plus here and the minus there you get plus 24 so the plurality of your measurement is also important you can also uh, measure the voltage across this or the current through this it is all possible but this is just uh, what we have uh, asked for this exercise all right this is for this example number three using superposition principle for a more complex circuit having three uh, independent sources one dc current source and two ace dc voltage source we will continue of course with other examples for also other methods like thefnn norton and also uh, other uh, circuits to clarify these electric circuits analysis in more detail if you have any questions comments please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible again don't forget to like and share this video so that we can reach more people for this interesting topic Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.